Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's Choose the Right chapter.com. 99.9 K I S W the rock of Seattle. All right. For every dude listening, this is a disturbing story because really this could happen to any of us. A 44 year old guy in Southern China recently went out drinking. And of course uh, he got after it, got after it so bad that he ended up blacking out, passing out. And when he woke up the next morning, he found his penis was missing. What? Dude, imagine this. What's that King Missile song? Detachable penis. Yeah. Yep, yep. Wow. Just think about it. We have all, at some point in our life, we have all had too much to drink where we go, oh, last thing I remember is I was here and now here I am in my bed. To wake up with no junk? Wow. He had no idea somebody chopped it off. While he was he was that trash, wow. he had no idea somebody chopped off his penis. What an unpleasant surprise. Now, that was the bad news. The, There's okay. some good news. Okay. At least they put the chopped off penis next to him, so he didn't have far to go to find out where uh, his little buddy went. So whoever chopped it left it there for him. Left it there for him. Well, that was nice. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Maybe it was accidental. Jeez, dude. What if he accidentally did it to himself? Ooh. Twist. I've seen those videos, unfortunately. Um, what do you see? Videos are, like, what? Remember when, when there was the two girls, one cup situation? Yes. There was also a thing called the Pain Olympics, and I had a very yep. creepy friend oh, who I made me watch about those. That. So in the, part of the Pain Olympics was somebody cut off their own thing? Multiple people. Oh, yeah. yeah. What? yeah it's Olympics. It was a what? sport. <laughs> it was very much like Clockwork Orange. They made me watch it. How? Clock. Uh, yeah. Clock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Clockwork Orange, the old movie, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, of course, uh, because he had his junk, whether or not he did it himself or not, at least he got himself to the hospital. They uh, took seven hours and were able to reattach his penis, get it working again. Don't know if it's working to full capacity, but at least it's working. Wow. Now, you go into the emergency room. I feel like he gets, I don't care if I've been in there for two hours. A guy comes in and he's like holding his, yeah. his junk. I'm like, you know what? He could bump him up in front of me. Yeah, he's got to go ahead of me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. I'm cool waiting a couple extra more minutes in, 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 for this poor man. <laughs> Damn, dude. They have no idea, by the way, who Chai. He says he has no clue. He has no idea. I think so. Vicky might be right. Yeah. What if he just did it himself? He has no motivation. No, you know, so he said, say no motive. Nobody, no idea who did it. So Vicky may be right. I mean, he might have just, like, had a bad night. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know if he's in a relationship. Maybe he did something that was wrong. He's like, I can't believe myself. I'm never doing that again. Oof. Or even something like, why won't you work anymore? I just, ah. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I've been there. I mean, I haven't wanted to chop it off. <laughs> Whoa. But every once in a while, you know how it is. You have a little too much to drink, and it's like, dude, you're letting me down. Okay, but I, again, yeah, wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. chop them off. Okay. Like, I've had a moment of panic when I like just couldn't remember where I put my car. If coming out of a parking, like out of a mall. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, my car got stolen. Like, that's a weird feeling. But <laughs> oh, wait, are you comparing, <laughs> down and are then... you comparing you not being able to find your car to having your penis <laughs> chopped off? I think you're missing a, f- a few tragedies in between. No, I'm, I'm comparing the feeling of not knowing where something went. Oh, I see. So you're like, hey, where did it go? <laughs> where did it go? Oh, maybe I should go check the mall next, next to the car I can't right. find. Maybe I should use my Find My Car app. That's it. <laughs> find My Peen. Vicky, make that app. Find My Peen. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So uh, there you go. That uh, That is a thing that happened again in China. I don't know, man. I mean, they got all these laws in China that make me feel like it's a much more restrictive company, country than America. But then you got people chopping penises off. So, you know, they like to the party, too. I, I mean, yeah, I hope it works again for him because it is a great story. Yeah. But I mean, you know how life is. I mean, whenever anyone's had anything reattached, it's not 100 percent like it used to be. Want to check out this sweet scar I got? Whoa. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, look, who wants to hear the time that I woke up without a dong? Now, look, I imagine it probably can do its one job, which is yep. number one. Right. But the other job, you know, I don't wonder if it can do it anymore. Ah. See, that's I mean, how do you survive I mean, that? They spent seven hours. I hope they were able to make it all 
Me too, but I mean the 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 number the number one thing is number one. You want to be able to right. make sure that you have a delivery system, you know, so that when you need to go to the bathroom, you can go like every other dude. So that's a good question. How did you not bleed out cutting that off? Mm. Yeah, you're right. That's an interesting question. Yeah, maybe well, put a I, pillow over it or something. I don't know. Oh, maybe they tied it off so they like a tourniquet. I mean, people have rings, oh, right? Boy, maybe they did the same thing. What, right? he, what kind of stuff is he working with, man? <laughs> I, I have no idea what's going on. Again, when you're drunk enough that people want to chop off your penis, th- th- that's a different friend group that I don't have. Because then Pretty think much. about the friend that this is what they thought was a good idea. I hope they were drunk. That's I have a feeling no friends were involved in this situation. You just think that he was so drunk somebody said, here's an idea. Or you think it was him? I'm, I'm on Vicky's team. I think he did it to himself. Damn. And if he didn't, it was from a scorned lover. But it wasn't from a friend. It was no, like a Bobbitt situation. Look, man, when friends are wasted and blacked out, sure, we might take a marker and draw wieners on their faces, but we're not cutting their wieners off. Yeah, somebody, because then you actually literally, because here's the thing that would stop me, I'd have to touch the guy's wiener. I'd be like, okay, I mean, you know what, it, it seems like a good idea in practice, but then someone's got to get in there and, you know, let's just draw a wiener on his head. Can we just do that, guys? Wow. Doesn't seem like a good idea in practice. It doesn't to me. No. <laughs> well, some people, when they're no. drunk, everything seems like a good idea, you know? You know how people go, hey, we should do this when we're drunk. I don't think so. So no, I, I, I've, Check out what I can do, guys. We've done dumb things as my friends and I. We've in many drunken nights. Never once did we think. Really? Like, we yeah, never like, thought about it one time. I remember one time, like, we were in Portland, and it was months of bachelor party. It was past blacked out, and so we had all these random, like, we actually had a radio station giveaway. They gave us all these temporary tattoos of their logo. So we put one on his forehead. We oh, put one on like, all over his face. Of course you did, yeah. It was like a country station in Portland. And it was just like right there. And didn't bother to tell him until he finally realized it. Like that to me is fun. Yeah. But never once did we think, pull his pants off. Let's cut it off. Yeah, here we go. Jeez, yeah, That's because right? I, uh, I, no. I would have brought it up to you guys. Wow. So, hey, guys, now that let's go, let's go next level. It's an insult to injury. It's because it took a couple hospitals to find that we're able to actually make the operation happen. And it says he was treated by microsurgery experts. Oh. Rude. <laughs> That's it. Nice. Very rude. Wow. It made me giggle. That of course, guy. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is insult to injury. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Damn, dude. I want to know more. I want to know if he did do it to himself or if there are just people that go to bars and try to do this when people are drunk. Well, and then they take his kidney. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah this, full is, of ice. yeah, this is urban legend sort of yeah. stuff right here, man. <laughs> this is, is going to be the new saw that's being made by Chris Rock. Exactly. Would you like to play a game? Uh, I secretly hid your wiener. Yeah. <laughs> if you can find it. <laughs> New York State lawmakers are considering a bill that would make it illegal for pedestrians to text while crossing the street. Wow. How um, about this? This is how bad we've gotten that, that, that someone needs to make a law? How good luck with that one. I mean, it's like jaywalking. How often is a police officer actually going to pull somebody over texting while walking? Ask the owner of the Chicago White Sox. Remember that he got pulled over downtown? Yeah, ask, I know. Ask me. I got. I didn't get ticketed, but I got pulled over. But, I mean, how often does that happen in your life? Once. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I still, I, I never happened to me ever before until Seattle. Yeah. Seattle is serious about it. I, but, I think there should be a law against playing on your phone as you're walking into an elevator. Maybe you should pay attention to someone coming out of the elevator. Well, that's the same thing with walking yeah. across an intersection. It's irritating as all hell. You know, guys that are standing on the corner because the, the light happens. I know they've got the walk. I'm ready to take a turn. They're just on their phone, but you know they will eventually walk. And it's like, I can't start because I don't know when you're going to start. And if you start and I hit you, I'm the bad guy. Get off your phone and just mm-hmm. walk like you're supposed to. Yeah. So I actually love this idea, but I'm with you, Steve. How are they going to, who's going to really, yeah. Checking emails. The ban would say you can't check emails, text, browse the internet, or otherwise even look at your mobile device while crossing any roadway. Only exception is emergencies. And, of course, this so is what not... what constitutes an emergency? Oh, that's a good question, Steve. You're going to have to go to court because huh? they want their $250 fine, so good luck to you. Oh, God. Because it's a money grab. I mean, come yeah. on. It's, they're not going to stop anybody. They're just going to take... They see a chance to take advantage of a generation of people who they're going to get... They think, I'm going to get 250 bucks every time from these idiots. That's what they're Dude, thinking. In a few years, it's going to be... I mean, probably not even a few years. I mean, it already looks like a, like a scene from like a zombie film outside with people just staring at their screens, not paying attention to what's around them. It's only going to get worse. I was watching that at the airport because um, I went and I got something and uh, uh, and also just in the re- and also just from the rent a car bus to go to the rent a car station just to get my car. I was watching everybody as soon as they sit down. It's like their hand goes for the phone. 
it's really wild mm-hmm. and it's it, it, and I just watched everybody and I thought wow and of course I'm the older guy and I'm like and my generation we we knew how not to do that because we didn't have it all the time. Mm-hmm. So I know how not to go for my phone because I'm like, this is like a five minute ride. I don't need to pull my phone out. I know exactly where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. I don't right. need to pull my phone out for anything. And it's boom, right off the bat, there they are. I do it in the elevator all the time. And for me, it's just a reason just to look at something other than that awkward standing next to somebody uh, in the elevator moment. Yeah. And you don't have to talk to anybody that way yeah. either. Yeah, it's definitely a way. You know, now, the, uh, the AirPods. The earbuds yep. are becoming the new way also to isolate people. Just I see people I feel walking like around with them all the time. Headphones in general have been around for a while, and that's been a thing. Yeah, I don't think I, it's new with the AirPods. I've noticed more earbuds on P. I don't know why. You're right, Vicky. I didn't see as many headphones, but I see a lot of these 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 these, these AirPods now everywhere. Like people just have them in their head, and like what? They don't even have their phone out. Yeah, it's they're just less innocuous like. than I guess the, the whole wire thing is a little bit more of a problem. But Vicky's right. In high school, I didn't want to deal with anyone. So I just would put on, I would just have headphones on my head and the, the, the cord just in my pocket. I didn't even have a Walkman. This is how long ago it was. It wasn't even a, oh, what a I, great idea. Just so that I didn't have to deal with like people. You know what I mean? Just yeah. had the headphones on. Mm-hmm. And I remember one time some dudes, they, they surrounded me trying to mug me for my Walkman. And they like got around me and it was like, give me your Walkman. And then just like, what? And then I finally, like, give me your Walkman. And I pull out of my pocket, it's nothing. <laughs> like, I don't have a Walkman. Like, what? <laughs> That's awesome. Like, no, give us your Walkman. I'm like, look at my pocket. There's nothing in there. It's just a cord to a really bad set of headphones. They didn't want the headphones. They just wanted the Walkman. And they just walked on to the next oh people. That's, That's hilarious. Like, That's awesome. I got nothing, man. They're like, we can't waste time with this idiot. He's a crazy person. He's got headphones <laughs> listening to nothing. Right, these kids. They're like, this whack job. It's just got the worst, like those old crappy, like, <laughs> oh, with the big foamy bits. Just and, the foam. Yeah. And like that weird tinny kind of like to thing that, yeah it wasn't even like a nice set of headphones so you're the early adopter of not wanting to talk to people right yeah that's genius yeah everybody <laughs> it seems like i feel like a, so many people are doing that now just checking out with that man somebody says it's happening over in uh in hawaii right now uh with the whole no texting and walking thing we got warned numerous times over there 125 dollar fine wow of all places i wonder why it's a problem in hawaii that they started first are people getting hit Maybe because uh, people are like on bikes, hanging loose. You know what I mean? <laughs> Is there any livestock that just kind of roams around? Yes, lots of roosters. Okay, yeah. so yeah. they can get aggressive. Yeah. Okay, then. That's why you got to stop the people. I have a question. Why is a woman purposely... Again, this woman is purposely covering her car in cow poop. It's been a delightful day for stories. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you why at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. So uh, we're having some lovely stories. I mean, uh, we told you about the, the guy that got so drunk, woke up with his penis chopped off. Lovely story. I don't uh, think anyone's going to have a worse day than that. No. 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 Now we go to India, Steve, your favorite place. Enya? India. Oh. <laughs> okay. Not the band. I'm so not really a fan of the music. I'm not going to go in you either. I don't know what, what's Whoa. happening here. I was waiting for you to play Slumdog. That's, that's, like your, that's why you love India, Slumdog Millionaire. Oh. No? Okay. <laughs> you know, I would swim in a sea of human excrement. I, I mean, you always, when we talk about India. I would don't... swim a sea uh, of human excrement. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, a quick aside, but I always got to give that guy credit because we've asked people to do stuff for us before and they've been really mean and no, we're not, we're too, we're too big, we're too famous. And Hugh, at six something in the morning, sang for us when you just asked him. And I don't even know if I asked him. I think I just mentioned how awesome I thought it was that he sang that at the Oscars. Yeah. And then he just busted into it. Yeah. Well, the reason we bring it up is there's a guy in India. Hi, what's up? Okay. Uh, he posted a picture of his neighbor's car on Facebook on Monday. It was over 110 degrees outside. Uh, so uh, what this person did in order to cool down was she covered her entire car in cow poop, which again, what? for everybody on the outside of that car with 110 degree weather and then the smell of cow poop, that is disgusting. Disgusting. I'm, I'm looking at it. It looks like she painted her car completely brown. I've seen worse uh, paint jobs. Yeah. Oh. I, I mean, she did a really good job. I kind of want to give her credit on that. 
Now, um, am I missing something? If you cover yeah. something in cow poop, oh, it's yeah. supposed to keep you cool? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. In cow- college in Plattsburgh, we used to do that in the summers because we didn't have air conditioning. Oh, so that's yeah. what you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cow poo is insulating. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. We, we use misters in Arizona, you know, to try to keep cool. Little swamp coolers, they call them. And, what about Mrs.? Uh, uh, it's looking like in uh, a... <laughs> Rural India, cow feces is often used as an inexpensive method of insulation. Uh, oh, I was right. I didn't mean to be. Mm-hmm. But insulating the outside of your car, I'm not sure Wait, that works. They put it on the floors and the walls of their home because they, oh. they think it'll help them stay warm in the winter and cool no, in the summer. No! It's well, like an Under Armour shirt for your car. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, that makes sense on the inside. Like, that's where we put our insulation. We put it between the walls. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I don't know, on the outside of the car like that? Keep the interior of a structure attached tepid in the harsh heat of summer or intense chill of winter, so I think it would do both. And you don't smell it. Oh, no, you definitely would probably smell it. I mean, that's a testament to how stinky people must be around this car, because yeah, if yeah, that's not wow. standing out... Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't know if it actually kept the car cool. Uh, again, because the metal of the car, I don't know if it made a difference or not. It made it look uh, cool. Uh, yeah, okay. So that's, uh, you know, there's also the sacred nature of cows. I mean, India is as a country, you know, a lot of their religious beliefs are about the cow being the most sacred thing in the world. So perhaps the cow poop also they feel is a divine cooling and heating nature. I don't know. What happens when it like, does it rain much? In that area, I mean, I don't know. I don't know oh, how it is. Call. Yeah, it would wash it right off. Weather. But yeah, when you think that that would be, I think really they weird. have monsoon weather once in a while in India. I Yeesh. think so. I don't know. Maybe parts of India. I mean, India is big, so I don't know. I have no idea what. Maybe this is just a really hot part of India. I don't I'm know. I'm looking at the story, and someone on the commented saying, "This is the stupidest thing I've ever come across." Well, you don't live in India, pal, so don't judge. I don't know. I have no idea. It you don't was. mess with that woman if you walk by and you see her just yeah. using like a sponge and just making. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, brush, what do you use to apply cow poop to your car? Your hands. Oh no, she did not do that. She used her hands. No, I would assume so. How do you, else do you get it so smooth? Why is that the first thing you think? Because yeah. it's not going to damage the paint. I would use more of like a spackle. Exactly, the spackle's metal. It's going to scratch oh, up the paint. You get those spackles they use in the shower that just spackle down the, the wetness of your no, shower. Sure. That's Vicky, a squeegee. Yeah, Vicky's right. Okay, by the way, squeegee. I use yeah. a squeegee. Yeah, she's right though. I thought that like you know. Plastic Plastic wouldn't scratch the finish of my car, and it did. I think she's right. You got to use your face. Your face? <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that what you said? Her hands. Uh, I still think you should use your face. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That took a weirder turn than I thought. Well, I was just trying to get Steve poop face. I thought, you know, let's do wow. it. Wow. I'm thinking paintbrush or a squeegee thingy. Right. Yeah. I I guess it's still unusual even for India because again, this is a big story. I, I don't think anyone else has ever done this before, or at least. We've never heard about it. So, congratulations. Poop on the car. So, the, the house is not vegan, then, basically. No. It's not vegan friendly. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. You can't. So, you can't. Oh, yeah. You can't use any part of the animal. No, you, for, can't, you, you can't put them to work to do anything. Oh, damn. Wow. I mean, I don't know if that's the biggest issue with this situation, but the, the car is not vegan friendly. <laughs> so they used to use cows to, like, you know, like pull the or oxen to pull the carts and to help plow the fields. So how do vegans feel about that if they got a carrot from a field that was plowed by a cow? I, like an oh, oxen? man, I don't Can't know, do man. It? I think you're opening up a, whoa, a war. Wow, I didn't even think about that. Steve, you're going to like this since we're yes, talking sir. about vegans. Little Caesars is the first national pizza chain. They're going to offer fake meat topping. Yes, Impossible Sausage. Yep. It will be available in the, on the Impossible Supreme Pizza in select locations for a trial run. We've already been having a text exchange with my wife and I about how excited she is. But I don't know if they're going to be doing it if it's just for vegetarians. Because if it's vegan, they got to figure out a way to get uh, like some of that fake cheese on there. Oh, yeah. I think it's got to be just for vegetarians yeah. at this point. But, yeah. It's a step in the direction. I'm going to let you know something. I tried, it, I tried a Beyond Meat. And I tried, I've had Impossible or I had Beyond. I forget which one I had. But I had you the first other had one. Impossible and now you've had Beyond Meat. I had Beyond Meat at Zulu's. Yeah. Dude, I thought you were crazy. I mean, I don't believe anything you ever say. I really don't. I don't I, take your. I don't really take your recommendations on anything because I, 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 I wish I could argue with you, but yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I just don't. But I tried it. Uh huh. I do. I can't believe it to the point where I talked to Sarah. I go, I don't know if you'll like this because she doesn't like the taste of meat as a vegetarian. And I and she said, you think I'd like? It? I go, I'm not sure you would because it really to me has a lot of the characteristics of meat. Smell. Yeah. Consistency. I can't. Beyond Meat Burger is freaking amazing. And I I, I think I'm going to get it every time. Because yeah. it's healthier. Mm-hmm. I, cu- I mean, you are right. It kills me to say this, but you were right. How is that possible that you were right about something? 
And it's about the dumbest thing ever. That's why. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. So, but no, dude, I mean, that's like the, the Lunchbox Laboratory, man. I mean, I hit that place up, and I've gotten to the point where I'm getting to be on Meat Burger every time because I just like the way it tastes better. And I like the fact that, look, I like a good burger, but if it's healthier, I'm going to go that way. Mm-hmm. So uh, there you go. So now Little Caesars, Impossible Sausage. How about that? What a crazy... Would you ever imagine five years ago that so many th- concessions would be made? I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I mean, I think it's great, especially when you're in a relationship with someone that is vegan. It's nice to be able to go somewhere, like a lunchbox laboratory or yeah. wherever it may be where we can both enjoy a meal and I don't have to like go to a vegan-only restaurant. She doesn't have to just order a salad. But I would never think like places like McDonald's or Burger King or Little Caesars are going to try and figure out ways to provide plant-based meals for people. We've come a long way, baby. We have. We've grown. <laughs> Yeah, we have. This country is growing. See, I was, you know, my wife and I were vegetarians. Gosh, uh, we're talking almost 40 years ago. Dude, not only did people have nothing, like I, they put meat on the salad. Like I think they, I think they basically just t- took the lettuce and just stuck it in a cow and then say, here you go. People looked at us like, what the hell is wrong with you? There was no options. There was nothing, especially on the East Coast. So, yeah, I, I'm with you, Steve. Kathy and I would be like, we couldn't go out to dinner because when she became a vegetarian, yeah. there was nowhere to go. Yeah. Nowhere. I mean, one person says Red Robin. They have Impossible Burgers now as well. Another person says the Beyond Meat sausages are great. Field roast sausages are next level. Okay. <laughs> for us. <laughs> And yeah. then there's just the idea that people go, how about the meat? I bet the meat's good, too. No, it is. Yeah. Look, I'm not, I'm, I, I, you know, when you're in, when, when vegan meals are being made and, they, and there's certain things that are like, whoa, this is just as good or maybe even better than some of the stuff that they're pretending to be, I'm all for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. I know the Robin had it. Now I'm going to pop into the Red Robin. That's awesome. Did you call it the Robin? Well, that's how we know all the cool kids call it. No, no, it's not. No? All right. Well, that's why. You know what? I'm starting something right now, Vicky. The Robin. No. Yeah. All right, how about the Batman? I don't care. Call what you want. I do my own thing. I'm me now. Someone said, why is your wife vegan? I know you've touched, I don't know if you've touched on it. I never heard why not being a jerk. I'm genuinely, genuinely curious. Oh, she's vegan because Steve just repulses her and he's made yes. of flesh. Thank you. That's why. That's exactly it. I don't even need to answer. There you go. I thought everybody knew that. I thought she just took one look at you on the wedding night and said, I'm going to go vegan. Yep. Can't handle this meat. Yeah, this is the other. Well, you can tell the story. What the it's hell? Not she didn't, dairy did not, never sat well with her. Okay. And never stopped never, thrilled, by the way. I, yeah, trust me. I know that every damn day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she never like red meat and then it, she was never really a big like chicken or anything like that it was more like she's like got to the point where she's like I just think it's gonna just be easier just to kind of just go straight vegan and be more disciplined with that and she's always so health conscious and, and never never look back and is it a Although vegan she- dietary choice not necessarily lifestyle choice uh, Meaning, does she avoid products like, you know, leather or whatever? No, no. She's yeah. got her leather purse. So that's a diet. And I'm, I'm not trying right. to make fun yeah. of her. I'm, because some no, people, know. it's it, her, her thing is strictly dietary for preference. Right. Not about any sort of belief She's system. She's never going to be like at a restaurant where someone's like, you you know what they do to that to make that that, that, that meat is murder. She's not that person. So she just happened to fall into a category that has a it's lot. sense. That has a lot more drama associated with it than she mm-hmm. actually is. Yeah. Which is really unfortunate because... It sucks for somebody who's just a regular person that goes, you know what, this is just food that agrees with me. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's the food of a camp that sometimes can be a big pain in the ass. She doesn't even like saying it because she knows that people just get on, you know, on edge if you say you're vegan. It's like almost like people want to fight you. I feel bad Verbally, for her. Of course. I really do because there are some people, it's just dietary. It's like, look, I, it just agrees with me better. It's not about philosophy. But unfortunately, it is in the same category. And then everybody, you're right. Everybody looks at her and goes, you must be a jerk. It's like, no, I don't, I, no. I was that because she's cross, she has CrossFit and she's vegan. I'm like, you're the two things everybody hates. <laughs> and I think it's because. Oh, she, you're right, dude. Wow. CrossFit, right? Wow. It's, it's, like, that is the two things. That's the big joke. It's like, you know, I'm, person who's vegan is going to tell you how vegan they are and the person who does CrossFit is going to tell you how much CrossFit they do. Yeah. And that's the problem with like the people that go overboard with their veganism or their CrossFit. They ruin it for everyone else. Them trying to stay healthy. Yeah, but they're like, jerks. oh, you're not vegan. Oh, you, you don't do CrossFit. Oh, this no, is how I stay in shape. She won't tell anyone any of that stuff because she doesn't want to deal with that, that stigma. Mm-hmm. Good on her. Yeah, I had no idea she was doing CrossFit. Oh, yeah, for a while now. Because that's intense. CrossFit is intensity because Kathy and Sarah did it for a while. Mm-hmm. And it's just, yeah, it's nuts. I mean, oh, yeah. I, even on Mercy Island, I'm like, okay, there's two guys running around with a gigantic, like, beam of wood with barbells hanging off, and they're just running up and down the street, and I'm like, what the hell? And I go, oh, I'm near the CrossFit. There is one thing, though, she will break the vegan rule for, and it's hilarious. Okay. It's the waffle cones at Molly Moon. 
Because she'll get the vegan ice cream and say, I wanted a waffle cone. And every time they're like, you realize that the waffle cone is on vegan. She's like, I don't care. I'm willing to be, I'm okay with the butter in that. Like, it's just, they're just so damn tasty. She's like, I don't even care. So she's actually, and what they don't understand, she's willing to put up with whatever will happen in her body because she likes the flavor. Well, that's so minimal. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like she, she, she's still having the vegan ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's what people don't understand. She's just trying to take care of herself. She doesn't have any opinion about anything. It's just, you know what? This is better for my body. Whereas, like I said, Thrill on the other side, not only will he destroy his body, but he will destroy our environment around us with his dairy allergy. Oh gosh, and then he just shows up every time. I don't even know. It's not even venti. Whatever the taller drink is. Oh, the grande maximanta? I think the venti. The, the super venti. On steroids. Like yeah. He's got the, I don't even know. It's like, it's like the size of a small child, the damn drink he brings in. <laughs> And it's just all milk-based. Oh, yeah. It's like, dude, what are you doing? He's trying to fart us out of the office. Yeah. Trenta. Oh, the Trenta. Yes. Oh, jeez. 31 ounces. Yeah, 31 ounces of uh, of milk in a guy yeah. whose body does not want that. Even I won't do that. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I am so thankful because I know that he's in this same room. At least we have Rev behind, you know, in a hermetically sealed different room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how Miles and the rest of them do it. You know what? They deserve every bit of accolades they get because they have to put up with that every day and still perform. The sainthood for the men's They room. really do. The, the, yeah, they, they deserve the sainthood. Ted, and there's no Miles. warning. It just happens. Is poor Robin in the same room? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she was yeah. Oh, Everyone man. Everyone but Mike. Okay, yeah. My, so Mike's the safe one. Yep. Okay. Well, somebody has to be able to, you know, just in case. There has to be one designated just survivor. Just in case everyone, someone pa- yeah, everyone yeah. passes out. Exactly. There has to be a designated survivor. All right, yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. The Black Forest is located in what European country? Tennessee. No. Oh. Um, England. No. Yeah. Uh, Greece. No. Oh, you are such a geography major. Look at you. Germany, you were so close. Yeah, actually, you really weren't. Uh, you want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206 421 Rock. We're playing Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's a question from a listener. Uh, My house is currently in foreclosure. I've stopped making payments. What can I do to save my house? If you're already in foreclosure behind on your mortgage, you can stop the foreclosure by filing a bankruptcy. There's different types of bankruptcy. Chapter 13 can help you catch up on your house payments if you're behind. It would mean that you'd have to start making your house payments again and catch up on the amount that you're behind over five years. You could also take off or strip off your second mortgage, which would help you to reduce your housing payment every month, especially once you're done with the plan and done catching up on your first mortgage. We could also try to buy you some time in the more in the in by filing a chapter 13 case. Filing a chapter 13 would definitely stop your foreclosure. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com. That's choose the right chapter.com. And thanks for listening. If your tank water heater is over eight years old, you may be sitting on a ticking time bomb. It could start leaking without warning, causing far more damage than the loss of the heater itself. Consider replacing it with a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to leak, endless hot water for spa-like comfort, longer life, and backed by Navian's strong warranty. Before time runs out, visit TanklessMadeSimple.com for the name of your Navian contractor. Count on me.